Hey, it's your boy CJ Beatty, other known as the softball motivator. I am simply and always freaking excited to get on here and talk to you. Talk to my ladies. Oh my God. Talk to my sisters. Just to be able to give you real talk about things that's going on on the field, the things that I see that you should know that can help you get that scholarship, help you make that team, help you come through for your team. Man, I got a few points that I cannot wait to talk to you about today. We will have a Q&A like we always do on here at the end. Uh, for the ones that's tuning in for the first time, I do these weekly, every Tuesday. Normally, I do them at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern and 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific. But since uh, everything's kind of opening back up a little bit, slowly but surely, my private lessons have started back. So now we shifted this motivational talk to 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific time. So it's all good. You know what I'm saying? We get to cover the whole country, you know, at the same time. So I really do love you for that. Um, I, look, let's just get straight to it. I got a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you girls about today that was just really bothering me. It was bothering me because yet again, my travel ball team, we got in this situation where we made it to the final day on Sunday. We were the two seed, right? Going into the play. And we lost our first game to a pretty good team. But let me show you and let me tell you how we lost. See, all during, and I shared this with my teammates. I mean, not my teammates. I shared this with my team and I told them, you've been practicing on machines throwing really fast, right? You've been practicing. Coaches are up close and throwing you and tossing you balls at high velocity. But whenever... A girl gets on the mound, gets up there on the pitcher, get ready to pitch to you, right? And she's got everything moving in that. Now, all of a sudden, your plan goes to pieces. You know, you, the elements, the, everything's kind of like, oh, no, I'm spooked. Well, the reason why you're spooked is because you psych yourself out before you even get to the box. You know, one of the things that drives me nuts as a coach is when a player comes to the dugout after they've seen the person warm up that's going into the game and they're like, oh my God, she's she's look she looks fast. Oh my God, she looks she's throwing this, she's throwing this, she's throwing 60, she's she's hitting 65, she's throwing 92. What happens is that psychs you girls out. I don't like that. Okay? I don't want you to grow up thinking that you gotta be able to hit this type of miles per hour, and if they throw this type of miles per hour, my chances of getting a hit has decreased. That mentality is weak. It's a weak mentality to set yourself up for failure like that, okay? When people used to come to Doug, I'd be like, hey, baby, he's throwing this. I'd be like, I don't need to know that. I'm good. I appreciate it. Thank you. I can get my timing right here, okay? It starts here. Stop setting yourself up for failure by thinking about failure. So what if she's throwing hard? You know why? The harder she throws, the farther it goes. The harder she throws, the harder you hit it. Okay? One thing I need for you girls to understand is when they throw hard, you don't swing harder. You swing smarter. Write that down. Because I got a few ladies that like to take notes on these. If your pitcher is swing is is tossing it hard, then you need to swing smarter. Okay? Not harder. Here's another tip that I want to give you ladies out here just for somebody on here. I feel like somebody needs to hear this. When you grip the bat, if you want to rip it hard, you can't choke the bat. You can't choke the bat. The bat is freaking alive. That's the way you got to look at it. Stop choking your bat. Your bat can't breathe. This over gripping it, gripping it like this, like choking it. Like you got to calm down. Chill. You feel me? Chill. Pump them brakes. You know what I'm saying? Pump, 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 pump on your bikes. Pump them brakes. Can't be choking the bat. Let me tell you why. 
yes, I get it that you want to hit the ball hard and you feel like you're in control when you grip the bat tight. But let me tell you what you're doing. This is science right here. When you squeeze the bat, stay with me. When you squeeze the bat too tight, it tenses up your entire arm and you start to look, you start to use muscles that you don't need to be using. It activates your big muscles. You don't need to use your biceps and all of those big type muscles when it comes to hitting a softball hard. You don't need that. So you need to relax. That's why when a, when a snake is about to strike, a snake is like right there. It's moving nice and calm and loose and very loose. And then at the last second, it strikes. You don't see a snake all stiff. Moving back and forth all stiff. No, his body is like luring you to sleep. And then, bop, she strikes. Wop, he strikes. Quick. You want bat speed. You don't want a long, slow whoosh of a swing. You want quickness. And quickness comes from loose hands, loose actions. You got to relax. Not all tight. I, it'd be all tight up there. I'd be like, girl, what are you doing? You all right? If you hold like this too long, you're going to catch a cramp in your neck. You got to back up. Slow down. When I see a lesson, if I'm working with a girl for the first time, and I say, all right, show me your stance. Let's, I'm going to watch you hit. And she's like, all right, cool. She goes to this. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Easy. I look at it like this. I'm like, hey, hey, easy now. Come on. Relax. Where you going? I'm right here. We good. Who pissed you off? Who made you mad today? Did you run out of cereal this morning for breakfast? I mean, you run out of milk? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, make sure you stay loose with your actions, ladies. Stay loose. Don't overgrip the bat. It's going to help you be more consistent. One thing you have to understand, honeys, is this. The barrel, the sweet spot on your barrel is only about this big, okay? And if you're trying to find the sweet spot more times than any, you're going to have to be able to duplicate. You're going to have to be able to duplicate that swing over and over again. And it's hard to duplicate a swing if you're stiff, if you're too tight. Relax. Drop those elbows a little bit. Relax those grip. Relax the grip and let the hands work. Become more handsy. OK, I just saved somebody right there. I just helped somebody out right there. And if I'm talking to you, you need to make sure you give me some hearts. You want to know how to pay me on this line? Pay me in hearts. You feel me? Pay me in hearts. That's how I get compensated by the hearts. I need to feel the love. OK, so give me some hearts when I'm hitting something that makes you feel good. All right. Next thing I need for you to understand. It drives me freaking nuts, freaking nuts. Whenever I see my team getting ready to get ready to play, they don't warmed up. They got the arms loose, right? We're waiting for the umpires to come. So we got a lot of dead waiting period because we got one umpire that I don't know what he's doing out there in the outfield at his car. We're just waiting on him. He's wasting time. But I know across the field is our opposing pitcher that we're getting ready to face. And I usually got one or two girls over there getting their timing on her while she's warming up over there across the field. The rest of my knuckleheads are over there playing flips, doing everything, laughing, gossiping, playing in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Doing things that don't matter. But I got one or two that's locked in on the game. I need to know that all of you girls that are on this live is going to not be that person that misses on the opportunity to get extra timing on that picture. I need to know that all of you girls are not going to miss another opportunity to get timing on a picture. Let me break down the top three spots to get timing. After you have gotten your arm loose, pay attention, write this down. After you have gotten your arm loose, after you have done um, your, your stretching, and your body is loose and ready to play, 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a pitcher warming up on the other side of the field. Grab your bat, lock your fingers, whatever you have to do. Stand in your batters in your batting stance and get your timing when she separates. After she comes through her motion and comes separation, once that separation comes, you need to make sure you're back and get your timing. That is major Major, that is a major, major key. I'm going to tell you why I tell you the next two. The other time, 
is in between innings. I don't care if you bat seventh. You need to have your behind, get your booty out of the dugout, get in front of the dugout with your batting in hand, and get your timing on that pitcher. The more chances you see that pitcher, the more chances you're going to have on getting a hit when it's your official time to bat. Oh, coach, I'm not up for like another three or four batters. So, it's free. Getting your timing outside the dugout is free, girl. It's free 99. Free 99. You feel me? Get out there and get it. That's two. And the last spot is the on deck circle. It drives me nuts. I was at the, I'm coaching third base, putting signs on. I look across the field and I'm like, hey, Stacy. What are we doing? This ain't no photo shoot. Turn around. Get your timing on the picture. Get your timing on the picture. And she's like, oh, okay, 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 okay. She's over there in the stands talking to mom, talking to dad, putting in a concession stand order. Not the red one. I want the blue one, mom. Girl, you about to bat. This ain't the time to, this ain't the time to like be out there putting in orders and taking pictures. All right? So let me talk to you on why that's important, those three spaces. Before the game, in between innings, and on the on-deck circle. Because I was a person that when I played ball, I tried to figure out why did it take me to my third at bat? Why did it take me to about the fifth or sixth inning to get dialed in to hit? And I started to think about it, and I was like, you know why? Because I didn't take advantage of the times uh, that I needed to take advantage of to hit, to get my timing on the pitcher. Before the games, I was playing. I was playing games where you turn your hat to the side and you're doing all the balls and stuff like that. I'm doing all this. First to bat, ah, three. First to bat, three. Right? I'm over two before I get dialed in. I said, yeah, I'm a slow starter. No, you're a slow starter because you don't know what, what you're supposed to be doing before the game. You're a slow starter because you're not getting your timing because you feel like you shouldn't be out the dugout until you're about to hit or in the hole or on the on-deck circle. That's the reason why. So I wanted to share that with you because I'm saving somebody tonight. I'm saving somebody today. I'm helping them get their batting average up right here, right now. Ladies, if you have any questions, I'm getting ready to wrap this up. But if you have any questions, we can go to a quick Q&A. Right here at the bottom of the screen, if you have a question, something if you've already played and there's something that you want to work on or a question for me or anything like that, put hit the question mark right here. Hit the question mark and submit your question there so I can put it up on the screen. Speaking of questions, closed mouths don't get fed, ladies, and I'm about to preach on that for a second. I know we got some young ladies on here today. I know we might have some eight. Eight and under, nine and under, ten and under. I get it. I understand. But here's one thing that I want you to understand. You're going to have to learn how to speak up for yourselves. You have to learn how to speak up. When a coach says, hey, do you have any more questions? Or do you have any questions for me? I want to help you get to the next level. He or she is trying to help you understand it so you can go as far as you can in softball. So why is it that when most of the times coaches ask, does it, do we have any questions? Nobody raised their hand. You know why? Because I used to be like that. I used to be scared to ask a question. That's one of the reasons. And the other reasons why is because I zone in and out. So when they ask questions, I'm over here like, I want to ask a question, but I don't know what to ask. Because you're not focusing. Don't be that person that misses the opportunities to ask questions and never be afraid to ask questions because a question is the quickest way to an answer. Everybody wants answers, but don't want to ask the tough questions. It shouldn't be a tough question when it pertains to your career or your life. You need to step up, woman up, ask that question so you can be on a fast track towards your dreams and goals. OK, so I just wanted to say I, I'm telling you, I'm saving somebody today. I'll be preaching on here. TSM, I'm, I'm about to be pastor, the softball motivator, pastor TSM, because I'll be on here preaching. Easton, no, they be like, baby, on here preaching. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have a robe on one. One of these days, I'm going to have to go go live on a Sunday and put a robe on. 
Because I be teaching. I be teaching my sisters on 